In order to give the following story justice, I would like to set the scene for you. We are on our way to visit a man named Quincy Howard, age 93, who was an eyewitness to the pistol duel between Brink Hollis and Constable Walt Crow in 1932 in Apple Springs, Texas. This pistol duel was next to Sue Saucer's store that left both men dead and two women widows, one of which was pregnant with their last child. Our goal is not to pick a side and say who was the instigator and who was the victim here. The answer to that question was buried with the two men. Our goal is simply to document the eyewitness account of a man who was there when it happened while he is still alive before that history is lost to us forever. The Texas Almanac says the following about Apple Springs. I'm going to read it to you. Apple Springs, also known as May Apple Springs, is at the junction of State Highway 94 and Farm Roads 357 and 2501, 15 miles northeast of Groveton in northeastern Trinity County. The community was established after the Civil War and was originally known as May Apple Springs for the abundant May apples that grew on the banks of a nearby spring-fed creek. When a post office opened in 1884, the name was shortened to Apple Springs. A school began operating around the same time. In 1896, it had an enrollment of 28 children. When the Groveton, Lufkin, and Northern Railway was built between Groveton and Vare, the town was moved a short distance to the railroad. By the time of World War I, the community had three general stores, a gin, a bank, a cafe, and a population of 75 people. When the railroad was abandoned in 1931, the town was moved to State Highway 94, which had been constructed two years before. During the mid-1930s, when our story takes place, Apple Springs had 12 rated businesses and 150 residents. The population continued to grow during the 1950s and 60s, reaching a high of 285 people in 1965. In the early 1990s, the town had a reported population of 130 and nine businesses. In 2000, the population grew to 185 with 21 businesses. Now today, it has a little less than 1,200 pe people. I have seen maybe three businesses in town and one or two flashing lights. If there's still a bunch of businesses, I'm not aware of them. So all of that to set the scene for what a small town uh, Apple Springs is. So you have about 150 people and two of them are shooting at each other in the middle of town in front of the only store that's in town. So the blacksmith shop is here and Sue Salser's store was across the street and it is now a family dollar. So now that I have set the scene for the sleepy little town southwest of Lufkin, Texas, let's go meet David Beasley the secretary of Mount Zion Cemetery Association that oversees the cemetery where Brink Hollis is now buried. And then we will move on to meeting Quincy Howard, who is going to tell us his version of what happened that day. And here we are at Mount Zion Cemetery, established in 1800. It has a historical marker there. And somewhere out here among all these headstones at Mount Zion Cemetery is where Brink Hollis is buried. Let's get David to show us where that's at. He's the farmer that he and Walt Crow, the lawman, were involved in a shootout where they killed each other on that day, which was a Saturday in 1932, April the 4th, I believe. So he's buried here. All his family's buried around him and we'd like to commemorate this spot. The paper, instead of calling it a shootout or a gunfight, they called it a duel. Uh -huh. Instead of calling him what a lot of people would call him, they called him a farmer. Okay. And that news flash went all the way up to Kansas, 
these newspapers, it was just prolific. So it may have been the last duel in Trinity County for that matter. Okay. Maybe in Texas. All right, well, let's go see where this happened. Okay, we're standing right where the old saucer store used to be. It stood right here. The saucer store was a, at one time, a post office, a barber shop. They made a living any way they could. It was an old wooden building. I remember it from my childhood. It was right here. And it had a barber pole over here. The store faced this direction. The cars would have either parked directly in or at the side. This was in, this was Saturday, April 14th, 1932. Population was low. Across the street, right there, where that pole is, there was a little closer to the road was the blacksmith shop. And the blacksmith being the, the town laborer, the most important person at the time was Charlie Graham. His blacksmith shop was right there. The man we're gonna to talk to later, Quincy, was across the street over there and he heard the shooting here and there were a total of six shots fired and he ran over here and we're gonna find out what he witnessed. Okay. So were any of those buildings here when yes. this happened? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure about that. The building on the right is an old mason hall. And that was here? I'm thinking it was. I'd have to look it up. But Let me move uh, around this pole here. The other was just an old junk building. It used to be a cafe. My father actually owned both those buildings at one time. Now all that's just fine. So those both would have been here at the time, though? I believe they would have been. I'd have to validate it, but yes. Okay. All right, let's go meet Mr. Quincy. You've never met David before, and you just agreed no, to let him come to your you. house. <laughs> I knew, I knew uh, Buford and, and uh, oh, you uh, knew Paul. Okay. You knew Buford? Huh? You knew Buford? Yeah. My God, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. And then, come in. This is my <laughs> daughter Cherie. This is my son-in-law. I forget his name. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. How you doing? Me too. We don't cut Tommy any slack. You ready? Yeah. Like I said, ignore me. Y'all just oh, talk, okay. and I'll record what needs to be recorded. She says we need to ignore her. Yeah. Oh, she's a filmer. Yeah. Well, y'all come in. Where did you work at? Well, I, I retired out of the Air Force. I retired out of the Air Force in 69. Uh, I put 21 years in there. Hey, um, Vietnam veteran. Well, most definitely thank you for your service. Sir. Yeah, oh, you will. But I've been here since, uh, oh, since 69. In this house? Yeah. Uh, me and the wife moved here. We, we was living up in Maryland. I retired out of the Air Force. You were living there. in Maryland? Yeah. And you ended up down here? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I was raised in Apple Springs. Really? Boot City. We were looking up some statistics the other day, and uh, there's 1,147 people there now in Apple Springs. Is that right? A little over, a little over a thousand people. Yeah, yeah. I thought there was only 250. 1150. It says 1147 online. You know, oh. you, uh, uh, what can are you to to Berlin? My, my dad. Yeah, you favor him. You know. <laughs> Well, I've always thought I favored mom, but thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you remind me of him, though. Oh, he was a big guy. You know, the old man, he was just... <laughs> and then, uh, uh, old man Buford, he was, he, he was no little guy himself. You know, Buford never owned a car. Yeah. Uh, he was a logger. Yeah. And when he went to Dow, he was so likable, they gave him a retirement. Yeah. <laughs> Bought him glasses and teeth. And they lived in a rent house in Freeport. <clears throat> and you remember, you didn't ever know, of course you wouldn't have known them. You know, what year were you born? 30, 26? I was born in 29. 29. 29. Mm -hmm. I was just a young sprout when that deal happened between, uh, uh, oh, what's it, what was his name? Uh, you talking about when, uh, you're on Walt Crow and Brink Hollis? Walt Crow and Brink Hollis, yeah. Hold on. 
Well, I, was, I was only four years old, but I remember it pretty distinctly, you know. I heard that shooting start. And Dad used to tell us. And I run to the, my dad's west door there on the shop, and I, I seen him, you know. And uh, I, I seen uh, uh, Brunk shot Crow first, and he, he went down. I think he shot him in the groin mm. or somewhere pretty bad, you know. But but Crow's daughter run out there and held him up, and he shot he he, he shot Brute down, and killed him. And I also witnessed Jack Tullis kill his cousin Chicken Tullis there. I just gotta mention Chicken Tullis today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was uh, Mike Hollis. Yeah. Who was saying about it? Yeah. Well, since I got a question, since we're gonna since we're gonna have it on film. Can I go ahead and ask you a couple of questions? Sure. For the sure, sake of sure. A, I, my my it, memory's pretty bad now. I, I couldn't have told I, it. I, I, I got that, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know. I uh, forgot. Uh, Alzheimer's? No, not Alzheimer's. It's not it's, dementia, is it? Well, it may be partly dementia, but it's... Uh, Let's call it old timers. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're here with... Mr. Graham, to discuss the gunfight in Apple Springs between Walt Crow and Brink Hollis on Saturday, April 23rd, 1932, and record Mr. Graham's account of the event. Yeah. For the record, would you, I know you know, but would you tell us um, your full name and age? Quincy Graham, 93 years old. All right. The date of the gunfight is recorded as Saturday, April 23rd. 1932, and it says in the afternoon. Does that sound about right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have been about this time of day. Exactly. There was another witness, too. Who's that? Isn't it your friend Troy? Troy, he, Troy he, Stanley? Yes. Yeah. Is he still alive? Uh, I don't know if Troy's still alive or not, but uh, Marilyn Stanley was another one. John Stanley and Amy's son, Marilyn Stanley. Was there? It was both. No, they both wasn't there. But I, I remember one of them was there, but I can't remember which one then. How old were you then? Oh, I was just a just toddler. Four or so? Something like that. Now, Charlie Graham was your dad, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, I've still got a piece of his blacksmith work. Is that right? I do. Yeah. I got it from Zemer Collins. Yeah. Oh, Zemer Collins. I remember him. Zemer and Brown. All right. Yeah. You Where did y'all live at? Did y'all live behind the blacksmith shop? Yeah, yeah. It kind of goes up that little hill a little bit. It went down and crossed the branch. Right. And, yeah, they had a bridge across that branch. We live right there. I saw somebody, one of the Grams, in that house a couple years ago. Well, uh, that house has been torn down now. It has. But now my brother lives on back on the back side of that property in a, in a motor home. And I went there. I, RV. I went there when it was a house. At, at, John yeah. Charles, his name. Okay, tell us about, let's, let's, talk, let's, you tell me about that gunfight. Well, I, we heard that shot, you know. And, and I, you were I, across the street at the blacksmith shop? Yeah, yeah. And I run out the west door of the shop and look as Miss Susie Saucer's store was there. Right. And that shooting happened on the west side of her store. On the west side, yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, evidently, I don't know what, what happened between Crow and, uh, and, and, uh, Brink. Brink, Brink Hollis, but I understand Brink was a kind of a bully, you know, I don't know. But anyway, he kind of challenged Crow's authority. Crow was, a, he was his, the, uh, what do you call him? Uh, constable? Constable, yeah. He was a constable at that time. And uh, that's, that's, they got into it. Got out there, they had a, had a challenge and had a shootout. And uh, when when Crow went down, my, his daughter run out there. She, I understand, she's around twelve years old, and held him up, and he finished all this off. Yeah. I also, also Willis witnessed Jack Tillis kill his cousin, Chicken Tillis. Yeah, I want to hear about that. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, the shooting was at, that saucer store was a wooden building, and I think it had been a post office. Well, now, it it was covered with metal, though. Uh-huh. Uh, Tin. Yeah, yeah. It had been a post office. Yeah, it had. And a uh, barbershop, I believe. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <clears throat> they said one of those bullets wound up going through that store. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. 
That's right. Did you know Brink, or did you know Walt either one? I didn't know either one of them. You know, I was I, I They're just, just adults. Proud. They're just adults. Yeah. Um, you ever seen any pictures of Walt Crow? No, I never did. He's a handsome young man. I may have his picture. Yeah. But uh, you know, he wouldn't he wouldn't go to the doctor after that. I that was what I was going to question. He, 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 like, he was bleeding pretty bad, but he wouldn't go to the hospital or nothing. He went home. He, he lived over it, though. Yeah. He didn't die that day? I don't think so, no. Huh. There's several people that say different things. Have you ever heard what the cause of that fight was? No, I don't. Uh, some say it was a I, woman. Some say. Well, I, I don't know. From what I understood, it was just a. They, he challenged Crow's authority. Crow was a constable, you know. I think Crow has shot people before. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I heard today. I don't know. Did you see them both laying on the ground bleeding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one was on the west side? On the left side? What, uh, well, see, they was on the right side of that store, on the west side. Yes. And so Crow was kind of facing me, and and Hollis was had his back toward me. So Crow would be behind, down down on the side of the store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they parked cars out there back then, or did they ride horses? What? Which one was it? I don't remember. I don't okay, remember I think they all had to come horse or car. I think that buggy. I think they all had to come in straight to the store, but they were yeah. on the west side of that store. Yeah. So. Did oh, that was me, though, young young guy like I was. That ball my. I, I imagine my old eyes got pretty big when I seen <laughs> and heard all that. And there was only 150 people in town True. at that time. So. Yeah, out of 150 people, two of them are shooting each other. <laughs> yeah. It's not a little bitty but, town. It's not the only shooting that happened there, though. You know, like I told you, I witnessed Jack Tellis kill his cousin. <laughs> right there in town at the same yeah. same area? On the other side, on the east side of the same store. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what what happened is that Chicken Tellis, he'd come to town and get drunk and just make a nuisance out of himself, you know. And Jack at that time was a constable himself, and uh, he had he told he told a chicken that he you know he 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 he, he, he couldn't put up with him coming to town and acting up like that, and he'd have to leave. And so uh, chicken told him he said, "Well, uh, next time," and he said this in front of witnesses. See, on Miss Saucer's store there, and uh, anyway. Uh, that uh, they, well, he wasn't going to run him out of town. But anyway, he'd come in, and sure enough, he is drunk, and he challenged Jack, you know, called him out. And went out there, and I happened to be looking that way. And they went out, and and uh, and, uh, and Chicken put his hands behind his back like that. Well, that was a big mistake, because Jack thought he was going for a gun, you know. He just snatched his six-year out, and, Shot him three or four times in the chest. His own cousin. Yeah, his own cousin. <clears throat> How old was he then? Huh? How old was you at that time? I forget. I, I was a good bit older at that yeah. time. Yeah, I was. Might have been a teenager at that time. Where was he getting drunk in town? Huh? <laughs> was there a bar? A honky tonk. I called a honky tonk. In fact, Steve Warren and Darlene Warren had to run that. Warren. Right across Warren. the street. Warren. Yeah. Yeah, right across the street from the from the what was it the restaurant then? And it's on the on the on the west on the east side of Miss Saucer's store. Oh, this is before Winston Eddington had his grocery store there, right? Yeah, no, I I think maybe Winston had his store there at that time. Didn't they move his store from Helmick? They they might have. That shooting between Walt Crow and Brent Collis. Yeah. All right, I'll holler at you later on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Charles still lives over there, you know. He's he's 80 years old. Your brother? Yeah. Where does he live? He, he lives in a in a in back, He's back the guy in our back side the, of the property. Here's a picture of Walt Crow. He's on the right. On the right. Yeah. He's 50. I don't know what he is in that picture. That day he was 55 years old. Yeah. He's buried in Lufkin. Oh. 
And I'll show you another one of them. Watch this, watch this next picture. It's pretty funny. It's of him also. Huh. I'll be. So when you went over there, it was bleeding and on the ground, pretty much. Yeah. My dad used to tell me if that's Oh, story. I didn't go over there, no. Oh, you didn't go over no, there? No. My dad wouldn't let me go over there. <laughs> I bet your eyeballs was over there. Oh, yeah, it was. You better believe it. I mean, that's a big I thing. My eyes were big, too. And they had that cousin there, too. He, he witnessed that, too. Did he go over there? No. Okay. No, we didn't go over there. That was a big old event, wasn't it? I had and we're still talking about it. Oh, yeah. You know, in the newspaper, they called it a I'll duel. tell you another event. Dude Williams and Sam Campbell. They was gassing up at my dad's gas pump right there in front of this shop and uh, dude was going to run Sam out of town you know Sam and they, he was he was drunk and crazy anyway they got into it and Paul Hood I don't know if you oh, ever yeah, he Paul, and Paul he and... went over and got dude's gun out of his holster he's afraid he's going to shoot uh, Sam you know he got it and run but that but but uh, dude just pulled his pocket knife and he and he cut <laughs> he, he cut uh, Sam up, uh, you know. Uh, well, Paul wasn't too far off then, was it? That's right. That's right. You remember A.B. Hood? Oh yeah, I remember A.B. They used to talk about how mean those those hoods were. Yeah, yeah. Deadwood. Yeah. My uncle was weak with Bill Hood. Yeah, yeah. You remember Bill? I don't remember Bill offhand. They were. Uh, I remember A.B. Yeah. Uh, well, they were all did you guys yeah. like all go to school together or something pardon did y'all go to school in apple springs yeah i graduated there in high school in 47. what was your graduating class four <laughs> <laughs> no they were several of us Vera pearl lee and herman hudson and uh, uh earl earl thomas I bet, you, I bet you remember who Gibson too. Oh yeah, I remember who Gibson. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Oh, who? Hey, I like him. Hmm. I really did. Where was the school at? The school? Uh huh. It was over on that, like going that North Cedar Road up north. Same building that's there now, or it, it's same place. Yeah, same place. Yeah. How far is that from the shooting? From where? From where the shooting occurred? Of oh, that's probably. A mile? Quarter of a mile. Yeah. So they weren't shooting around the schoolhouse? No, no, no. That would happen today. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was quite a deal, though. And we're still talking about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Brink is buried in Mount Zion Cemetery. That's what, yeah. That's and what Walt, I think, is in, is it one of the nicer cemeteries in Lufkin? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I got a bunch of folks buried in Mount Zion. I know. Both we started, sides of the family. We started looking at them today. On the Stanley side and Grill side. I saw the Stanleys today. They're over there on the left side as you go in. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of Grahams there, too. There's a bunch of Grahams there. Yeah. Grandpa Graham, Grandma and Grandpa Graham. And See, seeing that shooting at a, at a young age, did that, uh, oh, is that what it took you to join the military? Me, I'll tell you. But I don't think he hurt you. Oh, let me come around there. Being that young, seeing that shooting go on and witnessing that, uh, is that what uh, led you to join the military? No, not really. Uh, me and my old cousin, we were working over here at Lefty Ministries. Mm -hmm. I worked there about a year. And uh, so did he. He was working building horse horse heads and equalizers for them pumping units, and I was assembling the, the pumping unit gear boxes on the assembly line. Worked there about a year, and uh, we decided we we would join the army. So we went down and took the test, and at that time, if you was uh, make, you had to make a seventy percentile to get the army, navy, and marines, but you had to make a ninety to get the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And we both made a little better than 90, so we decided we'd go in the Air Force. 
You almost ate yours. That's fast. September 3rd, 1948, we went in the Air Force. Or I did. Yeah, we did. And uh, anyway, I ended up, I was in all during the Korean deal and got an assignment to Korea. But there's a guy who wanted to go in my place. And by that time, I had a wife to cook the kids. And I said, well, you make it all right as a personnel people. That's fine with me, you know. So he did, and he went. And I never heard from him since. But then, uh, of course, I got I got caught up in that Vietnam deal. I got I was there a couple of months, and that Tet Offensive broke out. And boy, the stuff hit the fan then, let me yes, tell you. I went outside the comm center. I was in teletype and trick tool maintenance at that time. I went outside the comm center that morning, heard that popping going on, and I got to looking. I said, hey, firecrackers don't have tracers. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, I mean, it got red, and we weren't armed. <coughs> but when Westmoreland come over there that next morning in the morning, he said, these men are armed forces, arm them. So they gave us flak jackets, helmets, and M16s in. I felt a whole lot better. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the beginning of the M16, wasn't it? Was that about when they came out? Yeah. Yes. Come out what, Tommy 63? Yeah. That, yeah about, uh, the, about that time, 63, 64, I can't remember exactly. Like that. But now, we, Air Force was first and got the M, 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 AR-15. Yep. And then we, we got, they issued us some M-16s over there. Yeah. M-16 M, uh, retired the M-14. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, depending on which branch. Yeah, know. and the, the M14 became a favorite of uh, paratroopers. That's right, that's right, that's right. M14 308? Yeah, I think it was a 308. Yeah, yeah, the M14 was 308. Yeah. Well, you know, each year at the cemetery, we've done this for five years, we make a, uh, we don't use the fun. I bet you know Cora Hines, too. Cora Hines? I don't remember her offhand. I've heard of her. Yeah, she, I'm trying to think of her husband's name. Anyway, each year we don't pull money out of out of our fund. We're trying to perpetuate the fund. Yeah. But we do a, a raffle, Wayne Strong and I do. I don't know if you remember Leo Strong. Yeah, I remember That's Leo it. Strong. Well, sure Leo's did, son. Yeah. He and I are, he and I'm I are trying friends. to think Leo and I were pretty close in, in grades in school. I love Leo. Yeah. You know, he only had two, two, two or three toes on one foot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Old Leo. Yeah. Old Leo. Well, each year we take we don't take money out of that perpetuated fund. We do a raffle. We've been doing this for five years, and we generate money outside of that. Mm -hmm. And each year we buy these coins. So I want you to have a set of them. This is every one we made. All right. Well, great. I you can look you. at them when you get time. This is the first one. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, this is the second one. Well, I appreciate. Kind of made that look like a. Do I owe you anything for that? Of course not. Boy, that's pretty. This one. Well, this one's beautiful. Actually, yeah. hands down. This one here, I made it kind of ugly. It looks yeah. like a, uh, it was made to look like a silver coin. Yeah. Then we had our 200, all these cases just fall off. So don't yeah. This one is our 200th anniversary. Yeah. And that was a very nice coin. It was larger than the other. And this is a start of a three year trek. Yeah. This one is hope. That's last year. Yeah. And here's this year's. This one is faith. Huh. And the next one's going to be love. We got to figure that, that one out. Fall off there. Yeah, you, these things will fall right out, and to handle them, to, to really enjoy them, you got to pull them out because uh, they're, they're really nice to hold. Yeah, this is my this is the latest one. Take, take a peek there, man. Doesn't that feel yeah. good? Oh yeah. So I want you to have a set. We may be doing something Mount Zion Cemetery Association. Well, I appreciate <laughs> that. I, I really do. Well, if you'd home. been there today, you'd have won you a bottle of Old Spice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Isn't it? Yeah. We gave we gave away some to the oldest. Well, see, team. I think I told y'all I lost my driver's license. I'm sure someone would be willing to pick I, uh, you up. I'm sure they would too. I would have found them. I uh, I uh, was wasn't taking my meds like I was supposed to, <coughs> and I blacked out and ran into my garage door. And uh, you know, a lot of people do that. I ain't blacked out. You know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. uh, the doctor took my my. You know, called somebody told seat, on you. Huh? Seat, yeah, and the doctor took my license away from me. You ever thank him? 
Boy, I've regretted that ever since. You can imagine. Yeah, that's a loss of independence. Yeah. Well, when, if, if I make a holder for these, I will be sure and get you one. Oh, Coleman's here, something like that. Yeah. That's probably them. That day that I called you, I remember you saying, I got them, but I don't have all the ones you're talking about. Of course, you're not. I don't, know about, I don't know about you, but I'm colorblind. Yeah. I think all men are. No, I don't think I'm colorblind. Oh, okay. Just that hard of hearing. Way. This way. <laughs> what is that one? Battle of Midway. Oh. Where'd you get that one? I forget where I got that. It Battle was sent to me from somewhere. Looks I, like it's got I know a man right in there. Yeah. That is, uh, you know what that says? It says, uh, uh, Military Order of the Purple Heart. You have a purple heart? I, 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 I ever got one, I didn't know it, but that this was sent to me. Oh, really? Were you ever injured in war? I wasn't injured in war, no. Hmm. And I've got this one here. It's. Uh... I got a customer where I work that is, uh, he, he got shot down and his flight suit, his helmet, and his ID are in the museum in Saigon. Oh. And then that was one plane. I don't remember what the plane was. And then he also had one. He had to crash it on the midway. Hmm. They had to put the curtain out for him. Hmm. Well, see, Tung's new air base it's was about to cross a wire fence from Saigon. Just, just a regular old wire fence. And that's all it separated. Really? Tung's new air base where I was stationed from Saigon. Yeah, this is the Battle of Midway right here. They had no right to win, yet they did, and in doing so, they changed the course of the war. Yeah. Those are nice. Well, now you got this set, and we're going to, here's a couple little bags, you can put them in. All right, all right. And uh, we'll, we're going to keep you up to date, and <laughs> if, we'd have, if we'd have been on our toes, we'd have come got you for today. Yeah. And like Cherie said, you'd have come home with a bottle of Old Spice. <laughs> well. <laughs> for being our eldest. My, my youngest son, Charlie, he's, uh, he put 30 years on police force here. And he works TABC now, Texas Alcohol Beverage Commission. He, he was in Lufkin? Yeah, yeah, he was a Lufkin police. He was a lieutenant. On Did you know Sherman Collins? Yeah. Sherman is yeah. kind of like my uncle. Yeah. Sherman babysitted y'all when y'all were kids. Yeah. I and remember he taught me how to dive Charlie, into a swimming pool. How to dive? He did. <laughs> yeah. Charlie retired from police force, and he, he's working the state now, that Texas Alcohol Beverage Commission. They run him all over, man. You remember Frank Dunn? Frank Dunn, I've heard of him, yeah. Frank lived in Hudson. Yeah. And he was in World War One before your time. Yeah. But he was considered a progressive farmer. Yeah. See, my dad knew <laughs> World War One bit. They would they would be you see a shop up there and everything. Oh wow. My dad's shop. Oh Charlie. Hey look at that. Yeah. Oh that's cool, man. Are you kidding? That's Charlie. Yep. That's him. Has your brother got his anvil? I think so, yeah. So this building no longer exists, right? That's the building he came out of that left side of when that thing was shooting went on, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I've been in that building before. Yeah. As everybody. Has. So yeah. the building does still exist? It, no, it's torn down. Oh, okay. And the Dubos, you remember old buddy? Yeah, I remember buddy. You know, they said after the Paul Dean and, and uh, Gertie May worked up there for years. Gertie May and Paul Dean. I see her in town occasionally. Yeah. But we're, what we're going to do with this, so you'll know, with your permission, of course, we're going to, Cherie will edit the video and whatever she does. And I've applied, of course, the family would have to agree, but I've applied a couple years ago for a historic marker for Apple Spring. Mm -hmm. And this would be it. Mm -hmm. And if you would allow it, you know, your words would go yeah. in it too, as far as some to substantiate the yeah. story. And then, An eyewitness account. Uh, Incidentally, that's my wife and I picture up there. Oh wow! And that thing is in front of. Here. Move it. Yeah, move that thing. Yeah, we we things see. We see. You know, uh, she looks like a cross between my mother and my aunt Joy. Yeah, She's beautiful. Yeah. You know, she she died in uh, five years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. We were married fifty years and three months. Dad and Mama were married forty-nine years and six months. Wow. Didn't make it. 
But I'm proud of you. I'm proud well, of you. Now, I was married to the first wife 12 years, but she wouldn't go overseas with you. Well, you're quite experienced by now. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you need. But, see, I, uh, she wouldn't go overseas with me. She could have went with me to, to uh, Okinawa and, and uh, uh, J Japan. But she wouldn't go either place. And, and, and when I come back from Japan then, why well, she wanted a divorce after 12 years. Did the, <coughs> and this one took them kids just like they was her own. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Was Patton a general when you were there? Pardon? You weren't there when Patton was there. Patton, George, George Patton? Yeah. I, I was ahead of you, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. This, I got another customer whose dad, he's deceased now. He worked financially <coughs> for Patton and MacArthur. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a, quite a story. Is there anything that we hadn't covered, y'all, that you can think I think, of? It, I think you've covered everything. Well, we're going to try to do. We're going. She's going to edit this. I'll be happy to come back and share it with you, so you can okay. see it. If okay. you if you care to, would you like to? I think it'd yeah, be I'd like to. And then we will go back to work. Okay. And I'm going to be. I'm going to feel free to give you a call. All right. What yeah, do you remember do about my dad? I just remember him. I remember. Your dad, and I remember Berlin and, and the old man. And Buford. Buford. That was a big guy, wasn't now, it? Now, now, Berlin and I, we, we were going to school. He was set going to school the same time I was. And he I used to say that. he got about a sixth grade education. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Well, and then he got, that was in, I guess that was in Apple Springs too, wasn't it? Mm hmm. There wasn't many, oh well, that would be about right. Yeah. See, well, we lived right there, right against the school. Sure you did. And that was, uh, that was Dubose's was. house to the left. That was uh, to the left of that station, wasn't it? Uh, Dubose. Miss Dubose. No, they, Dubose lived up there oh. on the main drag. I was, well, that's what I'm talking about, O.C. Yeah. O.C. Yep. lived next door. They had, a, they had a service station. Dad used to, he used to work there a little bit. Yeah. And that was right next door to you. I didn't know y'all had gas pumps out there. Oh, we did. Yeah. We had to. Uh, I'm trying to think of that woman who used to come haul our gas there now, out of out of Groveton. But we had uh, Ethel and uh, Regler, and I, I, I see as I think it's 11 cents a gallon for Regler and 13 for Ethel. You remember Mr. Okay. Lacey that had the dealership here? Yeah, I yeah. rented a station from him when I was about 17. Is that right? Yes, sir. <laughs> he was a codger man. Yeah, he would leave, he would sell to me up there. And then he would sell cheaper out of his own pumps down here. Yeah. <laughs> he How made, old are you now, Dave? I'm 64. 64? You getting there? Yes, sir. <laughs> but you know, to be 64, I've, I've seen. Yeah. I pay attention. My oldest son is 74. Wow. But he was he's a stepson. He was two years old with me in the first five months. Well, we can't hold that against him, can we? Him and one of my other sons lives in Natchitoches, Louisiana. Well, when we get all this done, may I, I'm gonna, may I give you a call and I'll come back. Sure, home. sure. And we'll do something interesting. All right. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me to your home. Well, hey. Not even knowing I, me. I've got Dr. Pepper and I've got, uh, <laughs> i got Dr. Pepper's and I've got tea back there. Yeah, well, save one for me next time. All right. Will you do that? <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. I want to come back. Oh, sure. Okay. All right. To be glad. To I know you in church, in church every time the doors open, so we won't do it <laughs> yeah. on Sunday. We'll try to do it. Yeah, on I went to church this morning, but there's a, have a men's to get together in the mornings up there on Saturday oh, morning. Oh, good. I mean, y'all. We gotta, call it. We call it the uh, Covenant Keepers. And These kids nowadays oh, yeah, can't I, spell I, covenant. I, 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 uh, I, I mean, every time that doors open, I'm, I'm in there. It's just four tenths of a mile on up the road there. You walk? No. <laughs> no, there's a guy that comes by and picks me up. He's oh, okay. An old, he's an old uh, veteran, too. I mean, you're in good shape for he your age, but... Uh... Years in the Army, and he retired a lieutenant colonel. Wow. What'd you retire out as? Buck, uh, tech sergeant. Tech sergeant, yeah. I think that's what Ashley is. I have a daughter in the Air Force. Yeah. I'm not sure what her rank is. She's been in 10 years. Ten years? You ought to be getting a few stripes on her sleeve by now. She got them. Yes, yeah, she has them. She's yeah. been sent to Guam for three years. Yeah? Yeah, she's on her way there now. Wow. Yeah. I've got, I've got a great-grandson 
that just finished his Marine Corps basic in San Diego. Wow. And they shipped him to Florida somewhere. Oh, a great boy. grandson. That'd be a happening place now. <laughs> you ever been to Guam? Never been to Guam. I've been, to, let's see, I've been to, oh gosh, where all have I been? I, I spent a year in Iceland, spent a year in uh, Vietnam, and two years in Japan, two years in Okinawa. Okinawa. And I, I went TDY to Nusur Air Base, French Morocco one time. Oh, that'd be neat. That's 25 miles out of Casablanca. We carried a squadron of B-36s over there. Did you get sure. cold in Iceland? Huh? Did you get cold in Iceland? Didn't it ever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got the feeling that's you know, they, they call it that. That's a fish. You, they catch a lot of fish mm -hmm. here, believe it or not. Yep. In Iceland. Uh, we went, went fishing. We was trying to use these artificial lures. They wouldn't touch them. <laughs> Finally, somebody kicked over a rock, and there was an earthworm. So he put it on a hook and got out there and he caught a fish. Couldn't get rid of it. So, boy, we started kicking rocks over and we, we caught a string of fish six foot long. <laughs> we had a big fish fry day. I was in the fire department what? Air Force in. What in the world kind of fish would it be? Well, they was uh, Arctic char, mostly, they, which is a trout. A trout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they was good eating. You lived a good life and rest yeah. of life at least. <laughs> well, we're going to excuse ourselves. And well... They got to drive to Houston. We don't. I, all I got to go to is Apple Spring. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, it was a pleasure and an honor to meet yeah, you. Yeah, you, you too. Yeah. Thank you. Glad you guys came. <laughs> These are good people. Yeah. Yeah. Part Thank you for the good memories. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing that I'm not quite your age and we know some of them same people. Oh, I bet you do. Yeah. My dad in Apple Spring and native. My, my dad and Hoot said one time they had a moving picture show come to town. Yeah. And he said, Hoot made a plan. He was going to get on his knees and go underneath the tent. And Dad was on his knees, hands and knees behind him. He said he got up there and got his hands underneath the tent. Dad poked him in the rear and said, get on up there. He said, he's standing on my hands. <laughs> the guy in the tent. Well, we'll look. We enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll see you next trip. All right. All right. I ain't going to be yeah. no stranger now. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. Oh, those are good memories. <laughs>